The U.S. Southwest has some of the best scenery and Native American history. Join us in our exciting 15-day, 2,000-mile adventure through four states and 21 national, state, and tribal parks. We started our trip in Las Vegas, through southern Utah, northeastern Arizona, across New Mexico, and ending up in El Paso, Texas. Our plan focused on three main sites. Bryce, because it's just a beautiful park and we love it. Antelope Canyon, because we've seen so many beautiful pictures. And White Sands National Park, because it's beautiful and we needed to visit as part of our quest to visit all U.S. national parks. What we discovered was a diverse land of beauty, from highlands to canyons to deserts, and rich Native American history. We started our journey with an early morning flight from North Carolina to Las Vegas. The direct flight landed in Vegas before 9 a.m. with a full day in front of us. Day one of our southwestern adventure, we're about to go visit Red Rock Canyon. And fortunately, we looked ahead and had a reservation. Because if you don't have a reservation, you cannot go. So this is our first activity other than the flight. All right, our first hike of our trip, day one, Calico Tanks. It's supposed to be the best trail at the Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area. Let's go. The Calico Tank Trail is probably the uh, most famous and uh, well-traveled trail. It's only 1.1 miles, but it is deceiving because there's a lot of scramble. So it's not your normal 1.1 miles, but the reward at the end is a great view of uh, Red Rock and Las Vegas. Beautiful up there. And it's really a lot of fun to come and do this trail. Red Rock Canyon is only half an hour away from Las Vegas Strip and Las Vegas Airport. So it's very easy to get to. By all means, after you get tired of cam gambling and eating and seeing all the shows, come out here for half a day. Beautiful scenic drive quite a few nice hikes here. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous. See the link in the description for a full video on Red Rock Canyon. We were hungry and tired after Red Rock Canyon with a craving for Hawaiian food for some reason. So we got what we wanted at Island Flavor with delicious poke and lunch plates. Day two of our great adventure. Today we're leaving Las Vegas for the Red Rocks and all the beautiful scenery that's ahead. Looking forward to a really good day. Today is all about Valley of Fire, which we skipped yesterday. We're going to pick it up today. We are going to uh, call up Canyon part of Zion, do a quick drive and hike, go to Cedar Breaks National Monument. Uh, hopefully uh, there is uh, a trail that we can take. And then uh, we're going to end up tonight near Bryce. Let's go. Valley of Fire State Park, the first stop that we are in today is the Beehive. Right after you pay the fee for the entrance station, uh, you come to these little rock formations that uh, kind of looks like a beehive. Good first stop for the day. Our first hike for the day is the White Dome Trail. Valley of Fire State Park White Dome Loop Trail. You go down this uh, pretty steep descent. That was a lot of fun just scrambling down into this valley. And then you go through some slot canyons that are pretty narrow and pretty fun to walk through. And then you come up to an opening like this one and uh, you make a loop back. It's uh, pretty sandy, so it's not an easy 1.2 mile loop, but uh, it's absolutely gorgeous and absolutely worth the trip here. There's so much to see at Valley of Fire State Park but we were short on time, so after a brief stop at Elephant Rock, we headed north to Collip Canyon, part of Zion. Day two, hike number three for the day is the Timberline Creek Overlook Trail over at the Collip Canyon, part of Zion. It's a short one mile round trip.
Kolob Canyon is the less known and visited part of Zion. It is easy to visit because it's right on the interstate. The five mile drive from the visitor center is just beautiful and led up to great views. Our next stop was the Cedar Breaks National Monument. In Cedar Breaks National Monument, uh, there is a little amphitheater that's sort of like a baby Bryce. So we got a nice little preview of what Bryce is going to look like tomorrow. And uh, you know, it's worth uh, a stop here just to uh, see the hoodoos and the, uh, you know, the, the red rocks, especially under the sun. We made it to Tropic near Bryce and had a delicious dinner at the Showdowns restaurant. They had a singer singing one of my favorite songs. What a great way to end a terrific day. Day three of our Great Southwestern trip. Today we are at Bryce and the activity today is all about Bryce. I love Bryce Canyon National Park. It is beautiful, it is human sized, and it is just a lot of fun to visit. And I can't wait to get to the park today. Bright sunny day like usual. And uh, it's cold, it's actually in the 30s this morning, which is what, probably what you expect in October for Bryce. This will be the third time that we visited Bryce and uh, on our road trip, we deliberately decided to stop here uh, once again, just because I enjoy it so much. Can't wait to do the hikes into the canyon. Well, it's bright and early. Let's go. Let's go have some fun. There is a full video on Bryce. See the link in the description below. Our first hike of the day is the famous Queen's Garden Trail that took us to the canyon floor, one of the best trails in all the national parks. Even though they still have the uh, park shuttle running, it's uh, the parking lot is not too crowded as of 9 o'clock. That's why we get here early. Yeah. It's nice when we're in, it's in the fall and um, there's not as many people as previous times we've been here. In the summertime, it's uh, a lot more people. But it is also earlier. So maybe as the day goes on, it'll get, it'll get more crowded. Coming up on arch number two. And you get through the arch and you see that grand scenery right there. Be careful. Don't want to keep going. Got to make a turn. Once you get to the bottom of the valley, you have these nice pine trees in the shade and the trail flattens out. And it's just a nice, really tranquil walk among the trees with beautiful backdrops of the, uh, the canyon there. We're now heading back uphill via Navajo Loop. That's because Wall Street is once again closed. Ugh, really mad. Last time we were here, we wanted to do that and it was closed. We ended up last time on Peekaboo Trail, which was far longer than I wanted. Uh, so we're going back up Navajo Loop this time. Back up to Sunset Point. These are the kind of scenes that's everywhere. This is uh, towards the end of the Navajo Trail near Sunset Point. Just climb a bunch of really steep stretchbacks and you get to this view. What a beautiful view. Can never get tired of this. There's a little viewpoint on right. Looks like a bunch of patrons sitting in a theater watching the spectacular show. Very interesting. At the end of the 18 mile scenic drive is Rainbow Point. Where you get a fantastic view of the landscape here. And at the rainbow point there is the Brissacone Loop, which is one mile. So that's what we're going to go on. Hike number two for the day. 
path, go through the woods, and comes out to this wonderful viewpoint. Just look at those colors. The scenic drive has many, many of these beautiful stops, overlooks, and the facility is pretty nice. If you come on a crowded day, of course, you're not going to have parking. That's why you take the park shuttle. But uh, towards the end of the season, like we're here in mid-October, uh, not a, really a problem with parking. Each and every viewpoint has its unique views and uh, has a story behind it. Uh, we're here at the Far View viewpoint. The many others, like uh, Natural Bridge, we were just at, uh, and uh, many others. It's just very enjoyable to drive along this scenic drive, and it is very, very tourable. Bryce Canyon National Park is very easy to tour. Just go right up the scenic drive with lots of stop points along the way. Hop out your car, take a look, and uh, go to the next one. This is Inspiration Point, and it took quite a hike just to get up here from the parking lot. It's quite a steep climb, but this view is beautiful, worth it. We're here in the afternoon, the lighting is not very good, but in the morning, I'm sure the lighting is gorgeous. Day three. We're at the end of, and it was a perfect day. We did exactly what we had planned at Bryce. Spent the whole day there. The weather's been beautiful. It was cold start to the day, but it soon warmed up very quickly. And uh, just bright sunny all day. Very comfortable for hiking. Bryce is one of my favorite national parks, and today is just wonderful. Uh, we came here specifically because we loved it so much, and it was well worth it, and it was everything I remembered it to be. The last time we were here, which was six years ago in 2016. Good morning! Day four of our fabulous trip starts very early for me anyway, because I'm going to go to Bryce and see if I can catch sunrise. And uh, hopefully take a time-lapse video of uh, the sun as it comes up and uh, shines light on the beautiful hoodoos. an early to start to catch the sunrise over at Bryce Point and take some time-lapse photos. I'm back at the cabin, get ready for the next lake of our trip. After a nice breakfast in the cabin, we're now going to be heading towards Page, Arizona for the next set of uh, sites that we're going to see. But before that, we're going to go to Mossy Cave, day four of our trip. Mossy Cave is right off of Highway 12 which is the only site at Bryce that is not on the main scenic drive. It's a 0.4 mile from the parking lot over to Mossy Cave. So let's go explore. Mossy Cave Trail actually branches off into two places. You go to the left, you get this view with a little rock arch here almost. Now, during the spring and early summer, you're supposed to see water seeping through. Mossy Cave at Bryce Canyon National Park. You see the water dripping here a little bit because we're in October. In uh, spring, it'll be a lot more water. After this, we're headed for Page, Arizona. Let's go see what we can find over at Page. Maybe we'll go for another hike, maybe we won't. Today is a rest day, so to speak, after a couple of days of uh, hiking. Uh, this is Mossy Cave, it's the only hike that we do. Let's go, time to get going to Page. Stop number three for today is the Pipe Springs National Monument. It is not too far away from Kanab, and it details the story of the Mormons, 
the Paiyu Indians and the federal government and the conflict that they had in the late 1850s. It's actually a very nice uh, national monument with a walking trail and uh, a lot of the uh, preserved uh, settlement uh, from the uh, 1800s, eight, late 1800s. It was a fabulous place to spend an hour and a half there. Watch the video, really, really understand the history. See the link in the description below for the full video on Pipe Spring and the fascinating history around this place. Our fourth stop of the day at the Carl Hayton Visitor Center at Glen Canyon Dam in the uh, Lake Powell National Recreation Area. Well, we're here on a Tuesday, unfortunately, and they're closed. But never fear, I plan for this, you know. We're gonna be here until Thursday, so we'll come back on Thursday. Okay. No wonder why it's pitiful. <laughs> yes, no wonder why there are no cars here. See? Now we know. Day five of our great Southwestern adventure. Today we started the day in Page, Arizona. And today's all about Antelope Canyon. One of the three sites that we plan our trip around. The other two being Bryce and White Sands, New Mexico White Sands National Park. Starting the day this morning with um, a few short hikes, just to you know, see what we can get in before our two o'clock Antelope Canyon tour. First activity of the day is the Hanging Gardens Trail. Very close to Page, right next to uh, the dam here. And then just a walk in the beautiful 60 degree sunny day. Let's see what we can find in Hanging Gardens. The Hanging Garden Trail is very well marked. And uh, there's no problem getting here at all. There's a little bit of a uh, climb at the end, but it is a fabulous trail. Easy to do, and you get to this nice little hanging garden. Just a nice walk in the desert. It's short, but uh, it's going to be very hot in the summertime. Uh, and and uh, if you do it when the weather's cooler, like right now, which is about 60 degrees, it is fabulous. All right, activity number two for today is the Chains Trail, which is at the end of this uh, gravel road. And uh, it basically ends in a place where you can have a beautiful view of the Lake Powell right before the dam, right before the Glen Canyon Dam. And you can scramble and go pretty much where you need to go. As far as the river if you need to, you can definitely see the water level dropping by the color of the cliffs behind me. And uh, it's a fun thing to do. Number two activity for today. All right, activity number three. It's the new wave trail, just on the other side of the Glen Canyon Dam. Supposed to be, quote unquote, almost as good as the famous wave. I doubt it, but let's see what it has in store. It's a pretty short trail, so shouldn't be that bad. I don't know if this is as wavy as it gets, but <laughs> obviously the color is nowhere like the wave. But nonetheless, it's still pretty. All right, we're getting ready to check in for our Antelope Canyon tour. Can't wait to see what it's like. Now, they don't allow videos uh, if you're going to post them on social media or share or anything like that. So you won't see a video, but hopefully you see plenty of pictures. And we're not here during the best lighting hours uh, in, the, in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, so we'll see how well it works. See you on the other side. Antelope Canyon is one of three sites that we planned this trip around. It's probably the place where I had the highest 
hope and expectation to see something that's just stunningly beautiful. Well, I have to be honest, that was a huge disappointment. I think partly because my expectation was so high after seeing all those pictures, but uh, the entire experience just felt wrong. Let's start with what we saw with our eyes. It was dark, it was not colorful at all, and uh, it was a slot canyon, and uh, yeah, the formations are you know, very interesting, but the colors are just awful inside when you see it with your naked eye. Now, with all the modern day cameras and all of the um, picture modes and you know, able to take pictures in low light and stuff, the pictures of these iPhones and um, Android devices make it look a lot better than it actually does in real life. The experience itself with the uh, Navajo tour guides, they have five different companies, I believe, that provides a tour on a schedule, and absolutely you feel rushed because the next group is right behind you and they try to hurry you along. You just don't get the opportunity to really sit there and observe and be awed by the canyon itself. Is Antelope Canyon worth a visit? See my take on the full video of Antelope Canyon. Yes, the link is in the description below. All right, our fifth stop of the day is the damn overlook. Go uh, down these rocks <laughs> that are sandy and uh, hopefully down there we'll get a good view of the Glen Canyon Dam. It's a short little walk from the parking lot. Ah, loose sand made it uh, very slippery. Day six of our Great Southwestern Adventure. Today is about hanging around Page and do the different hikes and the different sites. Our last full day here at Page and uh, we're going to the Toadstool Hoodoo's Trail first, about half an hour out of town. And uh, the plan is to go to the Carl Hayden Visitor Center that we couldn't go to on Tuesday because they were closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So today's Thursday, we get to go to, the, to visit the dam and see how they build the dam. The plan is to go to Lee's Ferry and the Marble Canyon area and see what we can find down there. And most importantly, the highlight of the day, in between the uh, dam and the Lee's Ferry is the Horseshoe Bend, one of the famous sites. We're gonna go there today. It's gonna be a good day. Our first stop for the morning, the Toastone Hoodoo Trail is fantastic. Not a very long hike. You get to this beautiful place with lots of interesting rock formations. And it was fabulous. It was fabulous. Very few people here. Very quiet and tranquil. Right? Yeah, but it's also October. So I think it's, uh, there are no real big families. It's in the middle of the week. But it is very warm in October already. I, I, I don't know what the temperature is, but with the sun beating down on you, it's very hot. Even though you get a breeze and it's kind of cool. Yes, but so, the hike is well worth it. Well worth yeah, it. Yeah, the hike is definitely worth it. And but the scenery I, at the end is I, fantastic. I can't see doing this in July or August. It would be unbearable. You have to get really early start. <laughs> yeah, and, and sunscreen and hats and coverings and everything to get down here to see it. But it's beautiful. Yep. All right, we all know that Loretta goes on these hikes with me because she collects Pokemons. She's like into this Pokemon thing. Pokemon so, go! <laughs> yeah. So, why don't you tell everybody what you found out here, more well, or less in the middle of nowhere. Well, but... in the middle of nowhere, there is actually a gym here. So, um, I'm surprised, but I guess because there is cell phone signal here, there are there's a gym and a couple of stops that you could turn here. And there's lots of Pokemon all out here waiting for you to catch them. So, that makes my hike bearable. 
<laughs> at the end of when, whenever I get to stop, I can at least catch some Pokemon while I'm here. And since we're out in the in the desert, it seems like the more desert type Pokemon out here. Obviously, I'm not going to find a fish or anything like that here. <laughs> but uh, there's there's more desert things. And since it's October for us right now, it's almost Halloween, and there's a lot of uh, those scary, scary ones right now. So it's nice. Nice to be able to catch some Pokemon in the middle of nowhere. Our second stop of the day is a lone rock. Yep, that rock behind me, yep, it's pretty much by itself. You drive down this road and get this nice parking area, and you get to look at the rock. Here's Lone Rock from a different perspective. You can see the color of the rock indicating where the level was for the water. And obviously, uh, in the years past, the water totally surrounded the rock which makes a, you know, a very pretty scenic picture. Now you can see that it's basically dry around the rock. The lake is no longer surrounding the rock. And this is a really nice, beautiful place here for uh, people to uh, camp out with their campers and RVs. And um, you, know, you can see how low the lake, lake is. Our third stop of the day was at the Waweep viewpoint, which has beautiful views of the marina and the dam and just a fantastic view of the plateau uh, it's easy to get to just drive up and uh, look around it's uh, well worth the uh, little diversion there Glen Canyon Dam is our fourth stop of the day and uh, we're here on a Thursday which means that they're open we tried to come here two days ago and they were closed and uh, unfortunately the tour itself is still closed they're not doing tours so uh, we just had to hang around the uh, very nice uh, exhibits in the visitor center and admire the big engineering marvel here and also uh, if you look on the other side the um, water level you know this is sort of a repeated story is uh, low and um, you know they say that if they don't get enough snow melt come next spring they're going to have to shut down electricity generation they're already not at full capacity in terms of generation um, so the drought is really affecting uh, a lot of things. Stop number five for today is our main activity, which is Horseshoe Bend. Horseshoe Bend is not part of the uh, National Park Service units, so there is a $10 charge for a car to come in here. And it's, what did she say, about a mile walk? It's a 20 minutes walk or 20 minutes back. Okay. 20 minutes trip, 20 minutes back. All right, so it's about a mile each way, maybe. We're approaching the typical area where you got lots of people buying for a picture. Uh, that railing over there. So, this reminds me of some of the other famous places like Lake Louise, where you have a bunch of people just gathering in one location, getting a picture. We're about to join the crowd. Horseshoe Bend. Mm -hmm. This is one of those places you come, look, and then you go back. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the walk here, and you see the landscape. I couldn't see the bend. I, did, I couldn't visualize the bend until we got right to this point. Then you could see it, and then you, then it was worth the the effort of yes. walking here. Not that it was. It was a flat walk, so it's not not a big deal. A lot of them. Yep. Our stop number five for the day, the highlight of the day, and we're here. This is the scenery. All right, Horseshoe Bend is pretty much the way that I thought it would be. Yep. It looks just like the picture. Yep. No better, no worse. And uh, checked it's, off the list. That's right. Checked <laughs> off the list. It was worth seeing. Absolutely. Yeah. We are on the Vermilion Cliffs uh, Scenic Way and up ahead you see Vermilion Cliffs. Stop number six for today is the Navajo Bridge. The original bridge was built in 1929 and it was the only bridge for 600 miles crossing the Colorado River. So a very important transportation link and then eventually it could not carry the weight of the modern traffic so they built a new one in 1995 and you know what they must have done it on purpose because the new one looks exactly like the old one 
Same color, same arch, same everything. And of course that one is wider and can support the weight. Over on the rocks, just below the bridge, we saw two California condors. Over there, they're numbered. You can see the number on their backs. And uh, it's great to see these birds. Well, stop at number seven is a quick little stop on the side of the road, heading towards the East Ferry. And uh, got these interesting looking rocks on the balance here. All right, day six is coming to a close and this is a day with lots of stops. I counted uh, seven, maybe eight, but hey, you know, who's counting? We end the day here at Lee's Ferry. This is the jump off point for a lot of the Colorado River rafting adventure through the Grand Canyon. Uh, we're not that adventurous, so we're not going to do that. Um, but nonetheless, it's another beautiful day out here in the desert. And um, we're going to head back into town now and we'll relax for the evening. Tomorrow we're on the move again. Destination is Monument Valley. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, day seven of our trip. Today is all about the Monument Valley and the Navajo tribe. The plan is to stop by the Navajo uh, National Monument. And, uh, and then we're gonna take a tour later on of Monument Valley. So really excited and another crisp, clear day. Nice cool temperature in the morning, bright blue skies. This is uh, becoming too good of a weather. Let's hope it stays up every day of this trip. So day seven, here we go. A great start in the morning. Stop number one for today is the Navajo National Monument. It is perched on top of this great scenery that uh, is just fantastic. Uh, and uh, a couple of three trails here. And uh, one of them is Sandals Trail. The Sandals Trail ends at this beautiful overlook, overlooking the uh, cliff dwelling of the uh, ancient Pueblo Indians. It's a very, very pleasant walk. Half a mile down, half a mile back. Excellent. Beautiful place to stop for the Navajo National Monument. We're on Highway 163 headed towards Monument Valley. And you can see these huge rocks just rising out of the plain. We arrive at Monument Valley about an hour before our tour at 3 p.m. Wow, what an iconic place. The sunset tour was fantastic. For more on this beautiful place, see the full video. The link is in the description below. The sun was setting as we finished the tour. What a fantastic end to a great day. Good morning, day eight of our Southwestern trip and great adventure. Today is going to be a busy day. Uh, planning to stop in a bunch of different places. We'll see how long we can uh, go and uh, what the uh, light will allow us to do. But uh, we're going to start the day at Natural Bridges and then uh, come around Valley of God, Moki Dugway, and a few other places, maybe Mexican Hat. We'll see how far we can get. It's going to be an adventure in the Red Rock Country. Let's go. All right, we are at our first stop of the day, which is Natural Bridges National Monument. At Natural Bridges National Monument, there is a nine mile scenic drive that takes you to three different bridges that you can look at. And the trail heads at least actually to the Natural Bridges. The first one that you come to is the Sepapu Natural Bridge. There is a nice paved trail that takes you to the viewpoint. And then a little bit further down, there is actually a trail that can take you down. Now these trails, all three of them, are relatively short. They're all less than two miles round trip. And some of them actually have quite a bit of elevation, elevation change in between. So they are, you know, can be very difficult. The first stop of the day is the Sipupu Bridge. The second stop is a horseshoe color ruin overlook. 
takes you to an overlook where you can look at some uh, cliff dwellings, I think. Let's find out. Our third stop of the day is Kachina Bridge Overlook. Again, a nicely paved trail from the parking lot out a few hundred feet to the Overlook. Our fourth stop of the day, the Iwakamo Bridge Trail. We're actually going to take this trail down to the bridge. It's a uh, 0.2 mile there and 0.2 mile back. 100 feet, 180 feet of uh, elevation change, so something we can handle. And uh, here we go. Well, we just finished stop number four, Iwakamo Bridge. Uh, we took the trail all the way down. And... Um, it was beautiful. You could go under the bridge. We laid there for a while watching the bridge from the bottom up. And you can go past the bridge a little bit and um, see the bridge from the other side. It's not very long, but it is uh, kind of steep. But uh, it's fantastic. Just our speed. Right? Yep. All right. Now it's time for lunch. Loretta's favorite time. It's my favorite time of the day. Time to eat. And yes, we actually went to town and got Subway today. We went to a Subway and got Subway. Yes. And here we are. A normal Black Forest ham, but wheat bread. It's got some stuff in it. I don't know. Seeds, I guess. Tastes good. Well. We got the Subway sandwich because we did a little research and found out that there's literally no services anywhere near here. Yeah. I and mean, then we figured that trail mix is not going to cut it. Right. <laughs> So here we are. We're in the picnic bench right behind the visitor center. Yep. There is a full video on natural bridges. Of course, the link is in the description below. So go check it out. After a pretty boring drive on top of the Mesa in two, on 261, we're about to enter the pretty well-known Moki Dugway, which is 10% grade and uh, gravel. Okay, stop number six was the Goose Neck State Park. Uh, actually, it's called State Park, but you know, at the end of the uh, roadway, there's a parking lot, and you see a uh, very nice view of several bends in the river. Now, the natural comparison is with Horseshoe Bend, and uh, you know, it's not as pretty in the sense that the colors of the cliffs are you know more just dirt color and nothing really bright and the river itself is muddy rather than the green clear and but it has several bends so it's not just one bend it's um you know like three or four horseshoe type bends mm -hmm. and that's probably why it's called gooseneck but it was uh i think it's worth a five dollars to get in here to take the picture yeah. uh as loretta says this is a five dollar picture yeah <laughs> <laughs> but in the distance you can see monument valley uh, now, we're here on an extremely windy day uh, to the point where you have to be careful that you don't get blown off. Um, but that's why I'm sitting in here in the car recording this because there's no way you could have hurt me with the wind blowing. All right, we just finished stop number seven, Forest Gump Hill and the Forest Gump Road, the road on which Forest Gump stopped running and turned around and went home. And with Monument Valley in the back, it's a pretty iconic picture. It was just a fun place to come and visit. And, um, you know, they actually made the speed limit uh, slower right at the spot. It goes down from 65 to 45 for a very good reason. And they built uh, a, a little lot, a couple of three lots here, so that you can pull over and actually park while you take that picture. And, uh, yeah, people are going right in the middle of the road to take that picture. Uh, sometimes ignoring traffic a bit, but uh, it's still a fun thing to do. The traffic is not heavy enough for you to not be able to do that. You just have to wait a while. Stop number eight is a Mexican hat. It's a uh, rock perched on top, uh, balanced right on top of the rock. It's an interesting name called a Mexican hat. Um, another name for it, as far as I'm concerned, is a balanced rock. Another balanced rock because that rock up there looks very precarious. That rock up there looks very precariously placed. We're now driving on stop number nine for today, Valley of the God Road. It's a meander.
meandering path through the valley here. There is more on Valley of the Gods in the Monument Valley full video. Check it out. The link is in the description. We made a lot of different stops on day 8, all of which was great and we managed to do just about everything that we wanted to do. We went to Natural Bridges, made a few stops there. We went to Moki Dugway and uh, we drove the Valley of Gods and that was a bumpy bumpy uh, drive and it basically got uh, the four-wheel drive uh, out of my system. I'm happy now um, and uh, we went to Gooseneck State Park to watch the bend in the river of uh, San Juan River and we went to the Forest Gump Highway Point as well as Mexican Hat. It was a full day with lots of different stops and it was beautiful, sunny and it got windy towards the afternoon but everything was fabulous. Good morning, day nine of our great southwestern adventure. We're uh, leaving Bluff and uh, this beautiful uh, location here with uh, great cabins all around in a circle like this. And uh, the facilities here at the uh, Bluff cabins is just wonderful. Today, we have run out of our luck of a string of beautiful blue sky sunny days. It was ferociously windy last night and um, we're headed for Canyon de Chez, the Hubble Trading Post. It'd be an interesting day because the forecast is for wind and rain. So we'll have to deal with that. We'll see what the day brings. Canyon de Chez National Monument is all about the canyon. Now the canyon is nothing really big or nothing really deep, but it is just very pretty to look at. It's got the grassy bottom and uh, there are you know a few houses down there. Uh, that apparently people live in and um, uh, the Navajos has been here for a long time and we are still in the Navajo Nation territory. The first overlook is the Antelope House overlook, the second one is the Mummy Cave and the third one is a Massacre Cave. There's some really sad history of uh, Indians getting slaughtered over here which is very sad but uh, it is real. Our first stop of the day is the Antelope House overlook over on the north rim drive of Canyon de Chez National Monument. Let's follow the path and see where it lands as we come to the overlook, Antelope House Overlook. Wow, look at that valley. Ah, that is a pretty sight right there. Stop number two on the north rim is the Mummy Cave and it's snowing a little bit, flaky. Over there in the crevice there you see uh, some structures under the cave and uh, that could be the mummy cave. Our third stop for the day is Massacre Cave. As the name may imply, some bad things happened here with the Indians. Very sad history. For our fourth stop of the day, we drove all the way to the end of the South Rim uh, Drive, Scenic Drive. We're at Spider Rock. We're, we're here and it's flurrying. It's cold. And she's cold. It's cold. I'm not dressed for s snow flurries. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. But that Spider Rock in the back is tall and powerful. Well, apparently we must be about 700 feet up on the valley, 700 feet. This is our number five stop for the day. The second stop on the South Rim. Sliding house overlook. Stop number five for today is the Face Rock overlook. A little short walk from the parking lot. And we have Face Rock. Oh, let's just beat that thing over there. Stop number seven was a Sei Overlook. I'm probably butchering the name, but 
That's what uh, I think it's supposed to sound like. And uh, it was a nice overlook, uh, like many others on the South Rim. Stop number eight for today is the Junction Overlook. Junction Ruins Overlook. Here we go. For more on the wonderful Canyon de Chez, see the full video. Of course, the link is in the description. Or you can look at that as the ninth stop of the day at the Hubble Trading Post National Historical Site. It's a place where uh, after the long walk, the Indians returned to here and uh, a trading post was established. It's the longest continuously running trading post. Let's go and take a look. Hello, how are you? Good. Until my glasses stop fogging up. Good morning. We woke up to day 10 of our trip in the snow. Look at that. It is flurrying outside. It's not flurrying, it's snowing. All right, Loretta says it's not flurrying, it's snowing. Well, we'll have to see what we can do today. Uh, we may have to abandon our plans, but uh, we're going to give it a try and see what happens. Hopefully the snow will let up and stop like the forecast says. But uh, this will be interesting. Big flakes are coming down now. Big flakes are coming down now. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what the day brings. Well, good morning. After driving through some snow and rain, we finally got to El Moro National Monument, where we're going on this trail called the Inscription Loop. It's only a half a mile uh, round trip, so it should be fun. Well, we're the first one here today because there are no footprints. We're going to be the first one to make the footprint. Here we go. As they say, national parks leave only footprints, which we're doing. And now we have footprints. <laughs> <laughs> the inscription trail was a fun trail. It's pretty short. And uh, you see the pool, and you see lots of different inscriptions on the side of the wall here, in the rock. And uh, this is just a sort of pleasant thing. Now it's cold, and we were not prepared for the cold. We don't have gloves, and we don't have wool hats. So it was pretty cold, but nonetheless, it was a uh, fun little walk. First walk of the morning on day 10. This little inscription here is uh, from 1605. What language is that? It's Spanish. Oh, Spanish, okay. Juan de that one down there is the same thing. That one says they came in here 1726. El Malpais National Monument is all about the lava flow. And what we're doing is a drive down Highway 117 which is kind of like a scenic drive. You got cliffs and mountains on the left side as we're driving south, and you got a lava flow bed on the right side, which is a big plain right now. This is one of the younger lava flows at only a few thousand years old, and uh, right now the road is basically on the boundary between the lava flow and the granite cliffs. So this is the La Ventana Arch at the uh, El Malpais National Monument. All right, that was stop number four for the day, the Lava Falls Trail. And uh, it was a lot of fun. One mile, pretty sure, but you have to walk on lava with lots of cracks and crevices you gotta be careful of. Um, but uh, it wasn't that hard, you just have to be careful where you walk. And uh, today it's meant to be pretty windy, but at least the sun is out now, so it makes it a little bit more tolerable in terms of the uh, cold. And uh, we're the only one here. I think we're the only one that's dumb enough to come on a day like today, I suppose. 
That will be our last stop at the El Mapeas National Monument. So now we're headed for the Petroglyph National Monument. Stop number five is the Petroglyph National Monument and the Piedras Marcadas Canyon Trail. Well, the Petroglyph National Monument is all about, guess what? Yes, petroglyphs. And uh, the way to visit this is, I mean, there's a visitor center, but there are no trails at the visitor center. You have to drive another three and a half miles or so to a place called the Piedras Mercatus Canyon Petroglyph Viewing Trail. Uh, this trail ironically starts right in a neighborhood with a parking lot, and then you go up on, on this um, path. Um, there is a 3.1 mile loop, or you can shorten that with uh, about two miles loop. The two mile loop is very flat, sandy, and it gets you to some of the petroglyphs that you can see very well uh, in the uh, in the stone of the falling rocks. Or the 3.1 mile trail would take you up onto a hill and then come back down. So we did the uh, two mile trail and uh, that was pretty pleasant except it was extremely windy. Although the temperature has warmed up quite a bit uh, since uh, the snowing this morning that we started the day with. It is an enjoyable hike if uh, you want to stop and just see some petroglyphs. And uh, you know, just interesting to just kind of sit back and wonder how the ancient Puebloans uh, did this and uh, the stories that they're trying to tell. So lots of uh, petroglyphs on the path. The long shadow in the setting sun. So which one of us, which one of this is me and which one of this is her, can you tell? Give you a hint, one is shorter than the other. <laughs> Good morning, day 11 of our great southwestern adventure. The wind is calm. It's a fantastic sign and uh, the sun is out, the sky is blue and we are going to explore the different national park locations near Santa Fe. So let's get going. It's a bright morning and the weather looks terrific. Our first stop of the day after driving through some beautiful roads with beautiful fall colors um, by the Hymas area and the Hymas River, just follow that, we come to the Valle Caldera. I think that's how you say it. Valles Caldera. And uh, what you see here behind me is the, uh, the lower point of the uh, caldera that erupted you know, millions of years ago and they pushed up some of these um, hills here. Valles Caldera. This is a Grand Valles. Used to be a lake. Well, the second stop of our day was a big disappointment in the sense that we went to the Los Alamos Manhattan Project site. Uh, that would be the number two of the three Manhattan Project sites. We've been to the one in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. But despite what the NPS app says, they're closed. I guess it's off season. They're closed on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So the visitor center was closed. So we couldn't go in there. However, they were nice enough to leave this park stamp outside. So we were able to get uh, the pre-stamped papers of the park stamp. At least we got that and had a good lunch in the town of Los Alamos. Our third stop of the day is Bandelier National Monument. We did our park business, watch the film, collect the stamp, and talk to the ranger. Since we only had a couple of hours, we decided to do the Pueblo Loop Trail, which was highly interesting. They have all these markers, up to 21, that tells you about all the different things 
between the different longhouses and uh, you know little caves with ladders that you can go to about how the ancient Puebloans lived. And it's a pretty interesting walk. There's a bit of up and down hill, but uh, not too bad. And uh, this is a Bandelier National Monument. Big room? Yeah. The room was It's a two bedroom apartment up there, huh? Probably. Day 11 was a fantastic day weather wise, but mixed on the visitation. The drive to Valles Caldera was beautiful and the park was interesting. I wish it had been more time at Bandelier, but the one trail we did was fantastic. I was disappointed with the closed Manhattan Project Park, but at least I got the second, third stamp of this uh, unique park. I was also disappointed the visitor center at Pecos was closed before its stated closure time. We were there at 4.20 when the published hour said it was open until 4.30, but they were closed. Good morning to day 12 of our great southwestern adventure. Today is an especially exciting day because we planned this whole trip around the one national park that we haven't been to since it was established. And this will be our 60th national park out of 63. And we're going to White Sands. White Sands National Park, we will be at a little bit later today. But first, we're going to the Salinas Pueblo Mission National Monument. It's another beautiful day with the birds chipping and blue skies. I'll be a little bit cold in the morning, just around freezing. Can't wait to get to White Sands today. Well, let's go. The Salinas Pueblo Mission National Monument is actually in three different sites. You have the uh, Curay site, which is where we are now, with a Spanish mission that is probably the best preserved uh, structure on, in this park. And we're about to go on a little short trail that goes right to the mission. Uh, and this is uh, for the first of uh, three places where you see the ruins, uh, both the Spanish and the Pueblo Indians. Now the Pueblo Indian ruins are, uh, you can't really see them because they were not built to last and they have already all collapsed, but you do see remnants of, them, of it. Uh, I've been here to learn all about the history of the Pueblos and the Spanish, uh, and uh, it's very fascinating. All right, we are at the Gran Corvaira site of the Salinas Pueblo Missions National Monument. This is a uh, third of three sites of the ruins that we've met, plus a fourth one, which is the uh, main visitor center that is a part headquarters. So it'll be four different stops that we made here uh, so far today. And um, the first two were mainly about the Spanish um, missions and the ruins for the church. And this one is more about the old Puebloan ruins. You can see from the hill up there, uh, it is quite big. Okay, this part of it is the church from 1659 to 1670. So this is the ruins of the uh, Spanish era here, where they have the Spanish and the Franciscan priests here trying to convert the uh, Indians. I am so excited to be at White Sands, our new national park we have never been to before. They made this national park after we started our journey and we finally made it. This is our last park in the lower 48, number 60 for us. All right, this is the second major park for our 
day 12 of our great southwestern adventure. I have a full video on White Sands on this channel. Of course I do. It's a national park, right? So check it out. The link is in the description below. Good morning. Day 13 of our 15 day trip to the Great Southwest. Today, once again, is all about White Sands National Park. And we uh, got a taste of it yesterday uh, when we got here in late afternoon. And we're going to go explore the full park today, do a few hikes, and uh, really excited about uh, exploring it further. Let's go! Our first stop, first hike of the day is the Backcountry Camping Trail. It's about a two-mile trail, and we're here on a very windy day. Pretty windy day. But uh, it's weather is kind of warm, you know, comfortable with just a sweatshirt. But it is windy, as you can hear. Well, our first hike of the day, the Backcountry Loop Trail. Well, as it turned out, that we did not quite complete the whole loop. We went uh, maybe a third of the way down and then decided to come back, primarily because it was just so windy. I took some uh, pictures and the video, but um, it was just way too windy to even talk about it uh, on the trail. But it was still amazing because because these uh, sand dunes are not that tall, maybe 70 feet, uh, you could see for quite a while, quite a long ways out. This is like driving with the snow cover. Yeah, it looks like it snowed. White Sands is certainly unique in her scenery. The White Sands is super bright. It is worthy of the National Park designation. We have now officially visited all the national parks in the lower 48 states. Two of the remaining parks are in the northern reaches of Alaska and one in the South Pacific. They're hard to get to, but we'll get there soon. Subscribe to this channel to find out when we get there and for more wonderful videos on our national parks. Our last stop of the day is in El Paso, Texas, in the Chimazal National Memorial. It commemorates the peaceful resolution of a border dispute between U.S. and Mexico. The park is on beautiful grounds, and you can see Mexico very clearly right from the park ground. Fascinating history here. All right, day 14 of our great Southwestern adventure and uh woke up this morning and the beautiful sight to see is those limp flags behind me which means that the wind has died down we're going to go explore el paso today and uh just to see what's around and the first one is going to be the franklin mountains state park we'll see you there well what a difference a day makes we are uh, at one of the uh overlooks here at the franklin mountains state park in el paso and today it is nice and calm very little wind and it is just very pleasant and gorgeous out here. We're overlooking the uh, western side of the mountain. And uh, you know, this is uh, considered a urban park because El Paso surrounds the southern end of this, Franklin Mountain. Over 7,000 feet in its peak, rising 2,200 feet from the valley floor. It's a very pleasant day to just come out here and walk around and uh, we're taking it easy today on day 14 of our trip uh just walking around a little bit not doing, doing any particular hiking and uh you know being nature lovers so when we come to el paso we decided to come to a state park instead of uh, other attractions in the city well our second stop is the nature trail again we're taking it easy today it's only three quarters of a mile with some exhibits and uh, it's really nice here at Franklin Mountain State Park. You're like in this mountain region, so close to El Paso, as I said. And uh, let's go. They set up this little hut with bird feeders, and uh, you can observe quietly from this little hut and the birds.
What a trip this was! We visited White Sands, one of the new national parks that was added since we started this journey. We revisited Bryce, one of our favorite national parks. Saw the other side of Zion, discovered a hidden gem in Canyon de Chez. Visited Antelope Canyon, saw the iconic sceneries of the Southwest, saw lots of beautiful natural scenery, learned a whole lot about history, especially Native Americans' interaction with the early settlers, and a whole lot of good Southwestern food. We brave weather from snow to 90 plus, with a healthy dose of wind thrown in, met lots of friendly people, and had an absolutely wonderful time. Can't wait for our next adventure. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States. Follow along by hitting the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and please share it with everybody that you know.